Hi everyone. This training is for th those of you that are interested in applying for the Listos California statewide and target grant program. My name is Cindy Logan. I'm the division chief over the Listos grants unit at Cal OES. Today we have Wahida Nawab, unit chief over the Listos grants unit and William Chan, pro program representative. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Number one, the presentation is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing later. Everyone who has joined should be on listen mode. We can't see or hear you and the raised hand feature is off as well. This training is an overview of the request for proposal and forms only. We are unable to assist applicants with the actual preparation of their proposal. Because this is a competitive process, we are unable to answer questions during this training. Please do not ask questions in the chat box. All questions concerning the RFP, the process, or programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. And we are only able to respond to technical questions about the RFP during the time between the publication date and the completion of the RFP process. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand the presentation over to Wahida. Um, go ahead. Thank you, Cindy. Today is February 8th, 2022. We will be going over fiscal year 21 Listos California statewide grant LS program, target grant LG program, request for proposal overview training. The agenda today will have the listed items that we will go over, Listos Grants Unit and contact information, program overview, purpose of the grant, eligibility criteria, funding for LS program and funding for LG program, preference points, programmatic components, reporting requirements, proposal rating sheet, checklist of required Cal OES forms. Listos Grants Unit and contact information. The Listos Grants Unit is responsible for the overall grant management of the Listos California Statewide Grant LS Program, Listos California Target Grant LG Program, Listos California Tribal Grant LI Program, and Listos California CERT Support Grant LC Program. Questions concerning the RFP, the process, or programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. Caloes staff cannot assist the applicant with the actual preparation of their proposal. Caloes can only respond to technical questions about the RFP during the period of time between the publication date and the completion of the RFP process. Program overview. The fiscal year 2021-22 Budget Act included a $25 million ongoing general fund appropriation to the Cal OES. $8 million Listos California Statewide Grant LS program via competitive process. Applicants, may, applicants can apply for up to $350,000. $600 million Listos California Target Grant LG program via competitive process. Applicants can apply for up to $500,000. Grant sub award performance period June 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2023. Submission deadline is March 1st, 2022 by 5 p.m. via email at listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. Purpose of the grant, the purpose of the LS and LG program is to support organizations throughout California that serve populations with key social vulnerability factors located in areas at moderate to high risk from natural hazards. CBOs can work independently or subgrant with local CBOs to provide disaster training and resources to vulnerable and diverse populations. The goal of this work is intended to increase their community's disaster preparedness response, recovery, and mitigation cap capabilities. Definitions, social, social vulnerability, the potential negative effects on communities caused by external stresses on human health, such stresses include natural or human caused disaster or disease outbreaks. 
Reducing social vulnerability can decrease both human suffering and economic loss. Socially vulnerable populations include those who have special needs such as, but not limited to, people without vehicles, people with disabilities, older adults, and people with limited English proficiency. Eligibility criteria. For a proposal to be considered read and rated, Lisa's California Target Grant LG program must be a nonprofit organization with a 501c3 status serving communities within the target service areas. Each applicant must identify its entire organization service area not restricted by jurisdictional boundaries. Refer to attachment A of the LG program RFP for a listing of the targeted service areas. Lisa's California Statewide Grant LS program must be a nonprofit organization with a 501c3 status serving communities other than those eligible with, within the Listos California Target Grant program. Each applicant must identify its entire organization service area, not restricted by traditional boundaries. And both the LS and LG program must be registered and current in reporting with the Attorney General's Registry of Charitable Trust, have an unaltered grant subaward programmatic narrative and grant subaward budget narrative in accordance with the instructions on Part 2, Section B of the RFP. Cal OES cannot alternate or modify forms without undermining its natural, neutral competitive selection process and will not read pages more than the maximum allowed one proposal must be emailed to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov by 5 p.m. on Tuesday, March 1, 2022. Proposals must be attached as a single document, example, as a PDF, and contain the forms outlined in Part 2 of the RFP instructions. Emails should identify, I, emails should identify the name of the RFP in the subject line, examples, LG RFP, my brother's house organization, the RFP that they are applying for and their organization's name. Funding for statewide grants, LS program. $8 million is available for the LS program for the grant subaward performance period. Applicants may apply for up to $350,000 for the 19 month grant subaward performance period to work with socially vulnerable populations in areas at moderate to high risk from natural hazard. Award tiers, CBO serving a population of more than 500,000 may receive up to $350,000. CBO serving a population of 250 to 500,000 may receive up to $250,000. CBO serving a population of less than 250,000 may receive up to $150,000. Several recipients may request an advance of up to 25% of their awarded funds. There is no match required for the LS program. Funding for Target Grant LG Program. $6 million is available for the LG program for the grant subaward performance period. Applicants may apply for up to $500,000 for the 19-month grant subaward performance period to work with socially vulnerable populations in areas at moderate to high risk from natural hazard. Award tiers. CBO serving a population of more than 500,000 may receive up to $500,000. CBO serving population of 250 to 500,000 may receive up to $400,000. CBO serving a population of less than 250 may receive up to $300,000. Sub recipients may request an advance of up to 25% of their awarded funds. There is no match required for the LG program. Preference points. Preference points will be given to applicants that have communities that reside within the perimeter of a city or county that has received a local, state, or federal disaster declaration within the last five years. Applicants must describe how they are eligible under the declaration and what they are doing to improve their planning, preparedness, and recovery to similar possible future disasters. 
programmatic components, managing subgranted funds to local CBOs, LISOS California grant program materials, training, establish and implement a peer-to-peer -peer engagement approach, identify gaps in proposed solutions, host a conversation to identify emergency preparedness needs of the community for integration to local emergency plans, capture stories of impact. Managing subgranted funds to local CBOs. The subrecipient may subgrant funds to local CBOs who will provide disaster training and resources to vulnerable and diverse populations and have the ability to serve as a fiscal sponsor for the selected local CBOs. The number of local CBOs selected should be informed by the regional picture of vulnerable populations the applicant intends to reach. These local CBOs will engage the the greatest possible number of vulnerable members in the applicant service area to reach the statewide objective of connecting more than 1 million Californians to culturally and linguistically competent support. LISOS California Grant Program Materials. LISOS California Materials will be provided by Cal OES vendor. Further information will be provided once a vendor is selected. If the sub recipient chooses to produce their own materials with LISOS grant, California grant program funds, they must receive prior approval from Cal OES and adhere to the sub recipient handbook part eight. Training, the sub recipient must incorporate the materials and resources developed for and provided by the LISOS California grant program in any emergency preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation training conducted with the grant with grant fund with grant funding. Establish and implement a peer-to-peer -peer engagement approach. CBOs who represent and connect to the region's most diverse and vulnerable population will create and implement a peer-to-peer -peer approach to engage and educate the community that reflects the needs of the target population. Each CBO must organize or their community to establish a tailored approach which will ensure their community. One is knowledge, knowledgeable about to do during uh, one is knowledgeable about what to do during a disaster and consider engaging community partners such as faith-based community schools, community centers, and etc. Two has emergency preparedness materials and access to information they need before a disaster hits. Three, is clear on the steps to take to increase their community's disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation capabilities, and, take them so and keep themselves, their families, and communities safe. Four, shares final approach and results with the Cal OES Listos California support team. Identify gaps and proposed solutions. The subrecipient must identify gaps raised by community input in the peer-to-peer -peer engagement in organizing process and proposed solutions to strengthening local county emergency plans. Share the recommendations on identified gaps and solutions with the Cal OES Listos California support team. Host a conversation to identify emergency preparedness needs of the community for integration into local emergency plans. <clears throat> the subrecipient must host a conversation to identify disaster preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation needs of the community for integration into local emergency plans as a joint effort with local leaders across sectors and the county emergency manager. Share outcomes of the conversation with the Cal OES Listos California support team. Capture stories of impact. The SEP recipient must capture stories of impact, highlighting outcomes and results of the local strategy, strategies and connections made as part of this effort that illustrate the purpose and intent of the LG and LS program then provide the stories to the Cal OES Listos California support team. These stories may be submitted in writing articles, videos, and photos. Please ensure that formal permission is granted for all stories. Reporting requirement. 
There are five progress reports required for the program. See the chart below for, for report period and due dates. This is also in the RFP. Proposal rating sheet. This is a competitive grant process, meaning that your applications will be ranked in comparison to all other applications received. This is also like located in the RFP. Proposal required documentation. This is the checklist that of all the required documentation, and it's the very last page of the RFP. Recommendation for award. Final funding decisions are made by the director of Cal OES. Funding decisions are based on the following. The ranked score of the proposal, consideration of priorities or geographical distribution specific to this RFP, and prior negative, negative administrative and programmatic performance if applicable. Once a decision has been made, the applicant will be notified in writing. Those not selected will receive a denial letter and information on the appeal process. Proposal submission. The proposal package must be received electronically no later than 5 p.m. on Tuesday, March 1st, 2022 to Listos Grants at caloes.ca.gov. Questions. Reminder, questions concerning RFP, the process, or programmatic issues must be submitted in writing by email to listosgrants at caloes.ca.gov. Cal OES staff cannot assist the applicant with the actual preparation of their proposal. Cal OES can only respond to technical questions about the RFP during the period of, the time, of time between the publication date and completion of the RFP process. This concludes the Listos California statewide and target grant program, RFP training. Next up is the grant subaward proposal training that will be conducted by William Chan, one of our LISOS unit program specialists. Thank you, Wigia. Hi, my name is William Chan. I'm the program specialist with LISOS grants unit. Today, we are going to give a presentation on the grant subaward proposal process. Today, we are going to provide guidance on the components that are required of a proposal and we are going to review those forms that I referenced just a moment ago and familiarize you with some tools that are available. The process of submitting a proposal begins with a request for proposal being released. This is our competitive process. Within the request for proposal, you will find fund source information, the background of the program, requirements, and expected deliverables, and instructions on how to apply. So where do you find a request for a proposal? It can be found on the Cal OES website at caloes.ca.gov and on the upper right corner, you will click the Cal OES divisions link. From there, you will scroll down and click on grants management. Then search for grants. Once you're on the search for grants landing page, there are a couple of ways to search. You may search by scrolling through the table shown on the bottom of the screen, or you may use a search box. I like to use the search box when I know which requests for proposal I am looking for. You may type the name of the program in the box, or if you know the two letter program acronym, you may type that in instead. Although we are talking about a request for proposal, I would like to draw your attention to the mailing list. When the Cal OES releases a request for proposal, our competitive process for funding, we send an email notification to anyone who has signed up for our mailing list. Please know the only time we will send an email is when we release a new request for a proposal, sending a, pub sending a solicitation to fill a position for one of our advisory bodies, or when we post a public meeting notice. If you are not signed up already, we strongly encourage you to do so so that you can receive these important notices. Cal OES released the Listos California Statewide Grants Program and Listos California Target Grants Program requests for proposals on January 25th, 2022, and applicants have approximately five weeks to put the proposal packet together from that date. 
Once complete, applicants will need to email a copy of the proposal packet to the Listos Grants Unit. Let's talk about the request for proposal, or RFP itself. The RFP has three parts. Part one is what you have to do. It explains the Public Record Records Act, submission deadline, eligibility, grant subboard performance period, funding, and programmatic requirements. Part two refers to policies or administrative requirements and includes references to the subrecipient handbook, components that are required with your proposal, policies concerning the budget, administrative requirements, and required or additional forms that may apply towards your proposal. Part three is a checklist that includes a list of the documents that are required with your proposal and links to the most current forms. This is an example of what the checklist looks like. It includes all of the required components and links to each form. Under the additional forms section, these forms may or may not be required depending on what you have in your budget. For example, if you do not have out of state travel, you will not need to include this form with your proposal. Once we receive your proposal, there is some status verification that your program specialist will do right away. For those of you who are community community based organizations, we will need to check the Internal Revenue Service website and the California Department of Justice website. In the next few slides, I will go over what exactly we are looking for on each of these sites. But the purpose of this is because the state of California accounting system requires information on these sites to be consistent and current in order to pay you when you submit your report of expenditures and request for payment. One of the first things your program specialist would do right away is check your IRS status. For those of you who are community based organizations, we would need to check your IRS status. As mentioned before, the state of California accounting system requires information on these sites to be consistent and current in order to pay you when you submit your report expenditures and requests for payment. Furthermore, your program specialist will verify the DOJ verification through the website listed in the slide here. It can be verified using your FEIN number, employer identification number, or organization name. We will have to select charity registration as to the registration type. As a reminder, the state of California accounting system requires information on these sites to be consistent and current in order to pay you when you submit your report of, of expenditures and requests for payments. When we check your registration status, we are looking for it to be current. This makes us happy because we can continue to review and process your proposal. If we see reporting incomplete or delinquent, this makes us sad because we will need you to update your status so that we can continue to process your proposal. If the program specialist contacts you to update your status, please make sure you address this immediately as we do not have control over the length of time it takes to update your status and we do not want this to affect our ability to process your proposal or make payments to you if you are selected to receive an award. There are eight forms that are required with every request for a proposal, regardless of the program type. Please note that most programs will require additional forms, so read your request for a proposal thoroughly. In these next slides, we're going to tell you about some of the more common mistakes that we find with these eight forms so that you know what we are looking for when we review your proposal. You can find these forms at the very end of the RFP in the checklist section with a hyperlink to each form. But first, here are a few helpful reminders. Uh, first, read the entire request for proposal to, under to understand what is required for the program. Second, please note that all, all forms have instructions. So if you have questions about a form, look at the instructions first and then email your program specialist for help. And third, use current forms. Cal OES updates our forms often. If you're using one of our forms that you've saved on your desktop, it's possible it may have been outdated and you'll be asked to redo the form, which may delay the processing of your award if selected. Okay, let's start with the grant subaward face sheet. The instructions are on the left and the most recent version of the face sheet is on the right. A few of the most common mistakes we find on the grant on the grant subaward face sheet include 
the last four digits of the zip code are often missing. Please be sure to go to the US Postal Service's website to look up your plus four and include that on your face sheets. Disaster slash program title needs to match the name of the program you are applying for. This can be found in the request for proposal. For example, if you're applying to the Listos California State Grant LS program, then write Listos California Statewide Grant LS program on line five. Indirect cost rates do not apply for applicants applying for this grant because this is a state funded grant. You can write NA here for not applicable. OK, this is a table that appears on the face sheets. We zoomed in so that you can see it easier. This is where your funding information will go, and you can find all this information in your request for a proposal. Please note that the grant year and fund source are now drop down boxes. Columns A and G can be typed in and will automatically total for you. In your request for a proposal in part one, section F funding information, you will find the information needed to correctly fill out the face sheet. This is an example of a grant subaward number. There is no need to fill in the subaward line area on the forms requesting it. The subaward number is given once an applicant has been awarded grant funds. This is the project contact information form. The instructions are on the left, and the most recent version of the form is on the right. Here's a list of things to keep in mind. Remember to use the most updated forms from our website. Don't forget to write the entire nine digit zip code number. Keep in mind, each point of contact must be someone different so that we are able to reach an alternate if there is an urgent matter. No whiteout if you have to handwrite. On lines one and two, make sure the grant subboard director and the financial officer are different. They cannot be the same person. Make sure to use the correct subaward number. This will be given to the approved applicant. The, the program specialist can fill this part out. Lastly, please make sure the official designated by the governing board on line six is the person who signs the grant subaward face sheet. This is the signature authorization form. The instructions are on the left, and the most recent version of the form is on the right. When we review the signature authorization form, we compare it to the project contact information form to ensure the grant subboard director and financial officer are the same authorized personnel. You can list alternate individuals that have the authority to sign on grant subboard director and financial officer's behalf. Just like the grant subboard director and financial officer cannot be the same person, you cannot have one person be an authorized signer in both areas of this form. It is best to have at least one authorized signer for each position. If someone is unavailable and you need to submit the report of expenditures and requests for funds or make modifications, it is easy to do so when you have a different authorized signer for each position. If not, there is nothing you can do until they return. If you want to change authorized signers, you must submit a grant subaward modification to Cal OES as soon as possible because it takes approximately two weeks to process. So it is important to make a modification request immediately when the changes have been made internally in your organization. This is the current list of certification of assurance of compliance documents we have. A common mistake is signing and submitting the wrong one. We must receive the one that's tied to the fund source for your program. The checklist in part three of the request for a proposal will tell you exactly which one is needed. Another mistake is using an old version of a document. The way to ensure you have the current version is by downloading it from our website. Again, the checklist will have the link for the correct and current version. Please be sure you're reading this document in full so you know what the requirements are, because when you sign this, you can certify that you are compliant. The red arrows, the red arrows are some areas I want to bring to your attention. Arrow one, subrecipient is the name of your agency. Please have this match what is written on the face sheet. Arrow two, pointing at line one, the applicant should complete the Cal OES program name and the grant subaward performance period. The grant subaward number should be left blank. Your program specialist will fill this in for you. Arrow three, ensure appropriate signers have signed the documents. This will be the official designated by the governing board. Arrow four, for community based organizations, it must be the governing board chair that signs this section. 
which is normally the next document in your proposal. Arm 2-106B, Grant Subaward Budget Pages Single Fund Source. The CAT OES has three budget categories. Category A is personal services. Category B is operating expenses. And category C is equipment. All three categories must be submitted with your application, whether or not you have items in that category. For example, if you do not have equipment, you can write none requested in that category. All three categories must be included in your application packets. The budget spreadsheet template will automatically add the columns on each tab. And please show the equation on each line item as to how you got the total. The personal services category is where you'll want to put salary, benefits, and overtime for people you employ at your agency. This is also where you will put your volunteer hours. The operating expense category is the meat and potatoes of your program. This is where you'll want to put just about everything else, including rent, travel, and training. The equipment category is where you'll put non-expendable property having a useful life of more than one year and a cost of $5,000 or more per unit. Just to be clear, if you're buying six laptops at a cost of $1,000 each for a total of $6,000, you would put those laptops in the operating expense category as the per unit price is less than $5,000. Now let's talk about the information we need to see on the budget pages. The gold bubbles you'll see on the next few slides contain the elements that need to be included in each calculation for each line item. In this example, we have a program advocate position that is making $4,000 per month. Please note that the salary cost can be shown as an hourly rate, a monthly salary, or an annual salary. Then we want to see the duration. In this example, the program advocate will be paid for 12 months, which probably matches the length of the performance period. And then we want to see the full time equivalent for the position. In this example, the program advocate will work 50% of the time on this program. Then finally, you will want to include a brief description of the line item and explain how it furthers the goals and, object and objectives of the program. For the benefit calculation, you will need to include the benefit rates. In this example, the rate is 22% multiplied by the total salaries of all employees in the budget that receives benefits. In this example, it's, it's $200,000. And finally, you'll want to include a brief description of what benefits are included. Unless you're paying the volunteer salary, you should have it in the operating section. Volunteers are also captured in budget category A. The first element needed is the rate that you have valued your volunteers at. Please know that the rates cannot exceed what it costs your agency to have a staff person doing the same job and that you can include both salary and benefits when calculating the volunteer rates. In this, in this example, the value of the volunteer is $12 per hour multiplied by the number of hours to be charged to the grants. In this, in this example, 1,200 hours. And then include a description of activities the volunteers will be doing. Now, we're going to show you a few operating expenses examples. Volunteers that are being charged for the following uh, per diem, gas, and mileage should be titled as shown in the field. Title as volunteer, title of what they are being charged for. In this example, they are charging to per diem and the name, number of training they are attending. Again, the elements in the gold bubbles need to be included in each calculation for each line item. For this example, we have postage. The amount for postage is $250 per month multiplied by the duration. And this example is 12, is 12 months, which probably match, matches the length of the performance period, multiplied by how, much of the post, by how much of the postage will be charged to the grants. Rent is, an, is another very common operating expense. For rent, you will need to add up the full-time equivalents or FTEs in budget category A, personal services, in this example, we have 4.5 FTEs. Then multiply the 4.5 FTEs by 125 square feet per FTE, which is what is allowed as per the subrecipient handbook. And then multiply that by the amount you pay for rent per square foot. Please note that $2 is the up to amount, and you should use your actual rate in your calculation. If your landlord charges you 65 cents per square foot, that's the rate you need to use. Finally, you will, you will multiply by the duration in this example, it's 12 months.
Some final reminders about your budgets. Please be sure you refer to the RFP to identify required and prohibited expenses and that you build your budget accordingly. Be sure to use whole dollar amounts only. Often when your budget is off by a dollar, it is due to rounding errors, so please be sure you are checking the amounts entered in your budget columns. Please include expenses in the correct category. And lastly, all budget line items require a justification and calculation. A request for proposal requires a budget narrative, which allows the subrecipient to provide details about their budget. The budget narrative typically includes how the budget supports object objectives and activities, the need for administrative costs, and the necessity for a sub and the necessity for subcontracts. The most common mistake mistakes we see with the budget narratives are that sometimes they don't match what's on the budget pages. For example, let's say you've emailed your proposal packet to the program unit, and during the review, your specialist determines that several corrections are needed to your budget pages. You make those changes for your specialist, but now your budget narrative doesn't match. So please remember, if your request for proposal requires a budget narrative, every time your budget pages are updated, your budget narrative must be updated as well. They must match. Next is the program. Is the, sorry. Next is the programmatic narrative where you provide details about how you will meet the objectives of the program. Please be sure you are reading your RFP and that your narrative addresses each of the questions from the RFP. We have often seen applicants use the same narrative that had been used the previous year, even perhaps for another grant that do not address any or all of the questions from the RFP. Next is the grant management assessment form. Per Title II CFR Section 200.332, Cal OES is required to evaluate the risk of noncompliance with federal statutes, regulations, and grant terms and conditions posed by each subrecipient of pass through funding. These assessments is made in order to determine and provide an appropriate level of technical, technical assistance, training, and grant oversight to applicant for the award reference above. The questions are related to your organization experience in the management of federal grant awards. This questionnaire must be completed and returned with your grant proposal materials. For, for, for purposes of completing this questionnaire, grant manager is an individual who has primary responsibility for day-to-day -day administration of the grants. Bookkeeper slash accounting staff means the individual who has the responsibility for re reviewing and determining expenditures to be charged to the grant award. An organization refers to the applicant applying for the award and or the governmental implementing agency as applicable. We just spent a significant amount of time talking about the eight required forms for every request for proposal we release, but sometimes additional forms may apply. Be sure to check part five of your request for proposal to find out if additional forms may apply for your organization. Some final things to remember. All forms have instructions. Use the forms on the website. Those will be the most current version. The checklist that comes with the request for proposal will tell you which forms are required. Email your program specialist if you have questions. We are here to help. And use the checklist in part five of the request for proposal. Okay, this concludes the request for proposal and application overview training for the Listos California statewide and target grant programs. This presentation has been recorded and will be available for on demand viewing later on the Cal OES website. Please remember to email your questions to Listos California, I'm sorry, Listos Grants at caloes.ca.gov. And thank you all for attending today. Goodbye.